We just learned a whole lot about Intel's next generation GPUs and let me tell you fellas, oh boy is it looking good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 11 CD key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 11, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. All right, so I have been absolutely foaming at the mouth for Intel's upcoming Celestial GPUs. These are going to be the successors to the Intel Arc Battlemage GPUs, which themselves were a huge improvement over their first generation Intel Arc Alchemist GPUs. In fact, the Intel Battlemage B580 is, in my opinion, one of the best graphics cards you can pick up if you can actually get it at MSRP and you're looking for more of a mid-range GPU, but in Enough, let's talk about Celestial, and yes, in today's video, I will explicitly be talking about the desktop graphics cards, and we will go over the C780, the flagship next generation Intel Arc GPU, as well as its step down C770. But in order to do so, we first have to go over some slides that were recently shared about Intel's next generation architecture, XE3, which will be powering both the mobile side as well as the desktop products, although, of course, there will be some variations. The desktop ones will be much larger. They might have more cash. You get the idea. But regardless, let's take a look at these slides. And this is actually coming straight from Intel. And this is showing the new architecture that'll first be debuting in their Panther Lake mobile CPUs. But again, it'll be coming to desktop as well. So that's why we're taking a look at this first before we break down the desktop specs. And this first slide, well, it's got a lot of information. It shows the micro benchmarks. And there's a lot that you can glean from this, but I want to focus in on one thing here, and that's the deep writes. Now, this is very bizarre the way that they're writing this, but essentially, if you look into it, and I do actually think that Gamers Nexus made a great breakdown of this entire chart, but this one in particular I find interesting because this is, in a way, actually suggesting that you could see anywhere from 1.9 to 7.4 times better performance when it comes to geometry or triangle efficiency. Now, this is important because, in theory, that means that more triangles that you aren't actually viewing, well, they're not going to actually be drawn on screen and therefore the efficiency is going to be far greater and also your performance should go up, which is of course great to see. And this is something that will impact a lot of games. In fact, in theory, this should impact all games. Now, does this mean you're going to see, you know, two to eight times more performance in your games? Absolutely not. This is a micro benchmark, but what it goes to show is when you take a look at all the various different things here, as they do also have stuff such as, you know, better texture handling, essentially when you take a look at the anisotropic filtering in sRGB. Well, all of this goes to show that the efficiency of the GPU has been massively overhauled and you're gonna be getting a whole lot more performance. And this is a big deal for desktop graphics where they have been behind in efficiency quite significantly. We do also know that this new architecture, according to the information they're sharing, is going to be a lot, lot larger, or at least it should be in theory, as the mobile product is going from four XE cores per slice to six XE cores per slice. And of course, more cores equals more performance as long as they retain the same clock speed and they'll likely actually have higher clock speeds, not the same. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But you know, in theory, this could mean that the Battlemage B580 desktop GPU that we have right now, well, it is available in 20 XE cores in that same GPU potentially could be 30 XE cores next time around. Now, will it actually be that much? Will we see the same 50% increase on desktop that we're seeing on mobile? Probably not, but I do believe you will be seeing an increase to some degree as yes, every render slice will have more cores. So unless they're reducing the amount of render slices, you're gonna get more cores in your next generation GPUs. That's a huge deal. And the final thing that I wanna talk about that they shared is the cache on these GPUs as apparently the XE three architecture is going to have 33% more L1 cache and two times the L2 cache, at least on the mobile variant. Again, how much different will this be on desktop? It depends, but I do believe you will be seeing more L1 and L2 cache in the XE3 on desktop, like you'll be seeing on mobile as this does go in line with what everybody else is doing on GPU architectures right now, as this does lead to increased ray tracing performance. And it makes a whole lot of sense and it will reduce the, well, the need for such a large memory bandwidth and so much memory 
if you're keeping more of those workloads off of the memory itself and keeping it to the local cache, which is actually a lot faster. So what does this mean for the desktop C770 and C780? Well, according to this information, you could expect upwards of 48 cores for their flagship GPU in theory, assuming the same 50% increase that we're seeing on mobile goes to the desktop. However, I'm gonna be a little conservative and say that they will reduce the render slices just a little bit to give you more cores, but not 50% more. So what does this mean? Well, let's take a look at the C770 versus potential B770. So the B770 and the B780 that I'll show you right now are, well, they're rumored to be coming out pretty shortly. I don't know for sure if these will end up coming out this year or early next year, or if in fact they'll end up getting canceled, but it does sound like this year or early next year is likely that these things will end up getting released. Now, if these do end up getting released, we're talking about 28 and 32 cores on these GPUs, which would line up with the first generation of Arc where we saw up to 32 cores, except for the Battle Mage architecture is much, much faster than the Alchemist architecture on their first generation products, and also has a much higher clock speed, leading to far higher performance overall. And you will still be getting 16 gigabytes of VRAM with faster GDDR6 memory. However, Celestial, let's start off with the C770. This will be on a more advanced N4P node, likely rather than the TSMC 5 nanometer node, which means you're gonna have higher efficiency, higher clock speeds, and overall a faster faster, better GPU. Also, you should be seeing the 28 cores on the B770 go up to 36, potentially. It could be slightly cut down from there, maybe 32, but 36 is potentially possible on the C770. That's a pretty big increase. In fact, that's a massive increase over the B580 that we currently have available with just 20 XE cores. This should also see a slight increase in the boost clock, again, coming from the more advanced TSMC node, bringing you from 2.8 to potentially 3.1 gigahertz. You should also, again, be seeing double the L2 cache, or at the very least, I would expect 50% more, but with double the L2 cache, you'll be seeing 72 megabytes of L2 cache. That's insane, but they will be sticking 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, could there be a 32 gigabyte version? Sure, that could end up happening, but I think for most gamers, 16 will be enough, and with 28 gigabits per second GDDR7 on a 256-bit bus, we're gonna be talking about 896 gigabytes gigabytes per second, closing in on one terabyte per second on a really powerful GPU. That's a huge deal and likely a TDP of around 280 watts. But now let's talk about this C780. This will be the flagship GPU. And according to this information, you know, before I thought it would be maybe 32 or 36 cores, but if XE3 really is increasing the amount of cores per render slice, I would actually expect 42 cores at a minimum for the C780. And again, that's with fewer render slices, which, so what I'm telling you is effectively this is very doable. What I'm telling you is it's time to throw your graphics card in the trash because this is really good. Okay, no, please don't throw your graphics card in the trash. But in any case, with a 3.1 gigahertz clock speed, potentially up to 96 megabytes cache, although again, it could be less, and the same memory setup as the C770 and a TDP of 330 watts, this will be a very, very powerful GPU. But how powerful will it be? Well, the information that Intel themselves gave us, it really lines up exactly what we should expect out of this architecture. I mean, they're showing that the old architecture is rendering. In fact, this is specifically Cyberpunk 2077, allegedly. Well, it's rendering on the older Battle Mage architecture. They're showing 45.44 milliseconds, and the lower the milliseconds, the faster it's running. Whereas on the new XE3 architecture, we are talking about 22.84 milliseconds. That is insane. That is a massive increase, but I do want to make you guys aware that this is, again, not going to be a like-for-like -like comparison as the new mobile architecture has 50% more cores. Will desktop? I don't think it will. So if we normalize these for the same core count, we actually come to an increase in IPC between these two architectures, whether well, I guess it could be IPC plus clock speed of a 1.326x increase. Now, to be clear, this could be a little bit optimistic, so final numbers could be a little bit lower than that, but a 32.6% IPC improvement in the Cyberpunk 2077 is extremely good. And if we actually go ahead and apply that IPC uplift, and let's just say it's 1.3X, well, the C770 compared to the B580 would be 2.6 times faster 
and likely coming at an MSRP of $399 with a available release date of quarter four of 2026 or at the very latest quarter one of 2027. The C780, the flagship GPU with that 1.3X IPC uplift that once again, I gotta remind you guys, is basically confirmed from Intel themselves according to just some simple math, well, that would give you a 3x performance increase over the B580. And with an MSRP of $499, and again, likely release date of quarter four of 2026, or potentially quarter one of 2027, that's actually not that far off. And we are talking about a GPU that in theory would be faster, yes, faster than the RTX 5080, give you the same amount of VRAM and likely half the price. That is insane, it is very doable though, and I would expect somewhere around there for the final GPU, unless they massively reduce their render slices way lower than I'm expecting. That would be bizarre, but they could do it if they're worried about selling a $500 GPU. I think they're gonna actually give this to you though. And if this really is about a year off, well, if you're someone who's thinking about buying a PC at some point, but you're not in a rush or you have a good graphics card now, you're okay hanging on to it, it might be worth waiting to see more information on these GPUs before deciding to buy something. Though that being said, if you do see some really good deals this holiday season around Black Friday, hey, that might not be a bad idea either. But there you have it. There's the Intel Celestial GPUs. That's pretty much what they should look like. I mean, we're talking about cold, hard math here, guys. So I would expect this to be pretty close to the final revision unless they just ax the C780 completely and they only give you the C770. But even if they did only give you the C770, we're talking about a GPU that would be extremely affordable and again, still around the RTX 5080. So very exciting stuff. Can't wait to get my hands on this and I will definitely be keeping you guys up to date on upcoming flagship Battle Mage as well as Celestial Intel GPUs. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Intel can really challenge the RTX 5080 and even dethrone it for a far lower price in not too long? Or do you think that maybe I'm having delusions of grandeur and all these sides from Intel are far too optimistic? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in my next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.